Hi everyone, it's Neil here from ECS Coffee, and today I'm under the sink, which I've done many, many times in my 26 years in business. And what we're gonna do today is show you how to install your coffee machine if it's plumbed in. Now, we sell a couple of kits of these. They're, they're designed for our, our Keurig brewers, these, these particular kits, but uh, the, the concept is pretty much the same. Really, the only difference is gonna be uh, the connection on the back of your coffee machine because they might be different. Uh, some of them are standard garden hose fittings, some of them are different, you're gonna have to find that out. So, we have this kit right here, and uh, we sell this basically with, with three parts. You've, you've got your connector to the back of the machine, and this one happens to be a garden hose fitting to a quarter inch line, a quick connect quarter inch line. We give you the quarter inch line that's in, in, included, um, so you can actually run from your cold water to your machine, and we give you the T connector as well. Uh, and I'm gonna show you this part, you may have a hard time finding it, but this is basically what you need. Uh, an angle stop valve, three eighths by three eighths by one quarter. I'll show you what that looks like because you can pick up something similar um, using compression uh, connectors and brass connectors at Home Depot, but if you can get this one, this is ideal for you for under your sink. So, uh, you know, you, you may want to get a plumber, uh, but if you're pretty handy or have someone that's handy, you can probably do this yourself. It's fairly easy. I'm not a plumber, uh, but I've taught myself this many, many years ago and never had any major incidents so far, so we're pretty good. So what we're going to do first is under your sink, you're going to find that you have two taps, two shutoffs, and you're going to have a hot and a cold. Sometimes they're labeled hot, sometimes they're not. Um, I happen to know this is the cold one. One easy way to find out is to turn on your sink, turn one off, and whatever's left, you'll know what's there. So uh, we want to find your cold, and we want to turn it off all the way, all the way to the right, we'll turn it off. And if you're lucky, you're going to have a flex hose. Most, uh, most new kitchens do. Um, if you have a, a, what looks like a brass or a hard copper hose, you may want to call a plumber because that's much harder to do. It takes a little bit more of a skill. So after you ran your tap up top, uh, the cold water, it should start to run dry because you've turned this off already. Then we're going to use our wrench and we're going to loosen this. I've pre-loosened this for the, for the video. Um, you're going to loosen this off and you're going to get some dripping of water usually out of the line. Not too much here, so we're pretty good. And then you, then you can get started. From there, we're going to grab that, that fitting. The brand, the brand we're using is John Guest. And basically that's just gonna create a T in between in your cold water line. So we're gonna turn this on here. Sometimes you wanna wrap some uh, plumber's tape around the threads, that helps. Uh, depending on how old your plumbing is, that can be really beneficial. And we're just gonna tighten that up. This is actually the same concept you would use for um, installing a water line for most fridges. So you can probably use this video for that as well. Same idea. And these are kind of the best practices and tools you can get for a non-plumber. I'm sure the plumbers out there have different opinions on that. And you, I will not argue with anyone online. I'm sure there might be better ways, but this is the way we do it. You want to make sure you don't bend that pipe at all. Coming from a guy who sells coffee and he's not a plumber. I just kind of want to show people it's not that hard to do. So then we're going to take the, the cold water that we disconnected priorly, the cold water line we disconnected priorly, we're just gonna put it back on top. Again, plumber's tape is, is beneficial here. So we're just doing this for the video. I don't know if you can get a shot of this jack. Hopefully you don't have a giant head like me for underneath these cabinets. Your head takes up most of the space. As Mike Myers would say, hid. My grandfather used to call me hid the bar. Big head jack kid in Scotland. We're gonna tighten this back up here. As tight as you can. Got a long, little bit of a ways to go here. And that's that. Okay. So then we have this guy right here. And you can see this is our, this is where we're gonna connect our water line to. So with your water line, you're gonna want a nice clean cut. Usually when we sell it, um, it's already pretty clean. There's no fraying on that but it's always best to give it a nice clean cut anyway. Nice and straight, nice and clean. Uh, knives are not the best, there is tools for this, but this typically works. And then what we're gonna do is, you can see this right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shove this line, we're gonna grab this back here. We're just gonna shove the line in and push, push it in as far as we can, just with hand pressure, and then we're gonna pull. And you notice it's actually gripped and it can't fall out now. It's actually gripped it for you. From there, you don't wanna turn your water on yet. Um, you can do a quick test, if you like, uh, to make sure you have no leaks. And what I would do then is I take this end of the line, right here, and I'm actually going to shove it in the sink above me and turn the water on. 
And that way I'll be able to tell if I have any leaks here, if I have to do any more work here before I move on. This is just one way to do it. You can do this at the end if you like as well. But what I try to do is try to get some really clean, dry paper towel and wipe everything off so that we don't have any condensation on there at all from when we were doing the work. You can get that out of the way. I'm gonna shove that in the sink up there. I'm gonna turn the water on and see what happens. Now, we've got two shutoffs. You've got the, the blue guy here now that we just added, and that shuts off the water to this blue line. And then we've got this one, it's the main water, it's gonna shut off the water to everything, so the water's off right now. We're gonna shut off the water to the blue line and we're gonna turn the water back on here. Now, you might hear some water running in your sink if you left that tap on from before when you were drying it out, but so far we have no leaks, which is fantastic. We've got nothing coming, it seems to be on pretty tight. Now I'm just gonna turn this one on, this is for the blue line. And you'll see, we've got water coming out into the sink. That's my quick test. And you can see we got nothing going on underneath. So we have no leaks, nothing at all. I like to grab a nice dry paper towel that I haven't used before and kind of wipe it over there and see. A nice dry one that doesn't have any, any moisture on it. I like to do this and see if we get anything. And if we don't, we're usually pretty good. So nice and dry, nothing going on, no leaks, we're good to go. So now you've got this line here. You've got this one guy here, and what are you gonna do with that? Now that's gonna go in the back of the coffee machine. But in order to do that, you're gonna to have to drill a hole likely through your countertop. Um, and that can be a challenge if you have a stone countertop, those are a little more, more difficult, but you really just need a quarter inch drill bit. If you've got a regular countertop, you can just drill it through wherever you want the machine. Um, so that's one way to do it. Uh, but you're also gonna to have to, again, stone, get someone maybe to do it for you, or a stone bit, that's a little dangerous. Uh, but you might have to go through some side cabinets as well in order to get over to where you want your coffee machine to be. My recommendation is try to do it near the top because then you can go over uh, appliances like fridges or dishwashers um, and try to go near the back. Go along the back and then you're gonna go up into your um, area where you wanna have your coffee machine. And then we're gonna show you how to connect this to the back of the coffee machine. That's next. Okay, so we're actually moved into our service department just because it's easier than working behind a sink. But imagine uh, this now is what's popped up above your counter. So you've ran the line from under your sink you now have drilled that hole and this is what's coming up and you want to connect to the back of your machine. So remember that fitting before, that, that garden hose fitting, quite easy to use on the back of, this is a Keurig 3000, but the 3500 and the 2500 are the same, as well as many other commercial machines in the market have now moved to this fitting. But you do want to check that first before you get started because some will have flare fitting, some will have 3 8 and quarter. You want to make sure that that's what you, you that's, that's the real tricky part that we can't sell a kit that does everything. Uh, you're going to have to find that out. But this again will work on the, uh, on the K3500 and 2500, and I'm assuming the new 4500 that just came out. So quite simple. And this machine here has some um, plumber's tape on it, and you're just gonna basically tighten up your, like you're threading a hose. Uh, you can get some grips and tighten it. Usually hand tight's pretty good. And you're gonna take this line, and you're just literally gonna shove it in the back. Hold the machine, shove it in the back, make sure it doesn't come out, and you're off to the races. Now your machine is plumbed in, what you're gonna to wanna to do is turn the water back on, check for leaks again under the sink, and also make sure there's no leaks here. And if there's no leaks here, I would then turn the machine on, the power of the machine on, and it's gonna to start to pull water in and fill. Again, check for leaks again, and you're good to go. And that is plumbing in a coffee machine for your office, particularly for Keurig. Now, Again, same concept works for actually a uh, fridge ice maker and for most coffee machines on the market. You're gonna use a similar concept, cold water line, putting a tea in on a cold tap and running a water line like this. Uh, there are other water lines. Some people like to use threaded water lines. Some plumbers hate this stuff. I understand why, because if it ever breaks or snaps, you can have leaks that you can't turn off. So there are different types of lines you can get that would be threaded and metal. Um, those are a little more expensive. They're not typically used, but I would recommend, um, if, if you're unsure about it, oh, let's talk to a plumber, make sure you get professional help on that. Now, we do have another kit that's specifically for Keurig. So if you wanna keep ongoing, um, you, can, you can learn about putting the filter on and how the filter works as the part of the system. If not, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. But I'm gonna show you this kit we have here that you can also purchase. Uh, instead of um, the original kit that I just showed you guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, all, take this all apart again first and kind of show you the differences. So Keurig actually sells a starter kit with a filter, which is kind of nice. You get that's kind of all included. Um, this one we, we sell for people that don't want the filter or wanna have most of the parts to get their machines done. And again, with other machines that don't require this. Okay, so in, in the Keurig unit, it's called an OmniPure starter filter kit. Again, you have water line, in this case it's white. You've got a, a filter and a filter head. 
And you'll notice this here is another hose fitting, garden hose fitting, that goes in the back of the machine. So we'll start with that. I'm just gonna roughly do this for you, but the same concept works. So what we have is a filter head, which you'll notice on the back of the Keurigs, there's some screws here. This is just gonna sit on here. So I'm gonna grab a Phillips and do that. So we're just gonna loosen these screws off a little bit. Now before we do this, before we do this, I'm gonna to wanna to screw the filter onto here. Make our lives easier. So this filter, this is the filter head, actually this is the bracket. So we're gonna do that with the four screws that come with it. I'll show you that in just a second. I don't know how good your camera is with getting this close up jack, but hopefully we can do this. It's four holes that line up. This puts your filter head onto the bracket. And we're gonna just tighten that up there. So. As tight as you can. We've got our filter head on, and then we're just gonna actually hang this on here. So we loosen this off a little bit. Now the filter, um, the filter head will have directions on it, um, a flow direction, so we wanna make sure that that's done right. I didn't mention that. Shove that on there and loosen this off a little bit more so it hangs. And we can tighten that up. Okay, so. In order to make this work, oh, one more thing. Forgot about all the extra parts that these guys have with them. So um, one thing I didn't do yet, but I can do it right now, is we can we need to put these uh, fittings sort of on here to the side. Again, you can use uh, Teflon tape, sorry, plumber's tape, Teflon tape. Plumber's tape to get these in. I'm gonna tighten these up on each side using a wrench. Make sure you get them in straight though, because these are plastic hand tighten, you want to do a little more than hand tighten, but for effect, you're going to tighten this all the way using your wrench. And I'm going to kind of speed up this process for effect. You can tighten this as tight as you can without over tightening because you can snap plastic if you do that. You can do this before you put the bracket on, kind of up to you, what I prefer to do. Okay, and then you're gonna have these guys here, little elbows. They're basically, you'll notice these are quarter inch. They're basically like the same, the same uh, diameter as the tube. So they just go in there to make your life a little bit easier to connect the water lines in so they're not sticking out like this. They go down behind the machine. Okay, so then what we do, remember we have our, we have our, our, our connector here, garden hose fitting on the back already. So that blue water line that's coming in, in this case, if you bought the Cura kit, it's gonna be a white water line, but the same idea. They've included a shutoff, which you can put in between. You would literally just put it in the end um, and then put more blue line on this end. So you cut the blue line, put this in the middle. This is a shutoff for the back of the machine in this particular case. Okay, so with your blue line, we're gonna to wanna to put the shutoff in. So you're gonna cut your blue line and you're gonna shove this in. Checking the flow. Then you're gonna take the other, blue, other, other part that's nice and cleaned edged and we're gonna shove this right into the machine. Now you have yourself a shut off on the back. In case you ever need to shut off the coffee machine, you can just shut it off right at the back. So this is your water line in, the one that we did from under the sink. It's gonna come up, it's going right into the filter. And then from there, we're gonna then take more blue line, clean cut, put it in here. And then we're gonna connect this into the back of the machine, just as we did before, nice clean cut and off you go. So now what we have is we've had from under the sink, we've shown you the blue line coming up. It would come up to here. We've added in another shutoff for safety. It came with that particular kit. You then come out of the shut out of the, the shutoff into the filter. The water will go through the filter, come back out here, 
and into the machine. Now, doing this, you do this all with the water off, obviously. You turn the water on, and you're gonna check all of these for leaks all over the place to make sure there's no water dripping. Then you would turn the machine on. The filter will have some air in it, so the water's gonna push through. Sometimes it makes a, an error in the machine. Just turn it off and turn it back on again, um, and you should be good to go. And that is plumbing in a Keurig filter onto the back of the machine, but it's also a very similar concept for any machine out there. Um, this one just happens to be made with one of the kits we sell, so we wanted to show you guys how to do that and install it yourself. But again, there are really phenomenal plumbers out there. If you want to hire a plumber, give them some business, your local guy. They know what they're doing better than I would, but if you are handy or you think you can do this yourself, these are the basic instructions to do it, and this is the stuff that you're going to need. If you have any questions, please ask down below. Um, some people do this with other materials. Like I said, this is again, just the stuff that we sell. This is what you're gonna need if you're gonna go out and do this and you're gonna try and buy the equipment um, at the local hardware store. Ask below, we'll get back to you. And if you liked what you saw, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.